Hey, Christ Church family, Pastor Lewis here. I hope you're having a good week so far. I have the pleasure of sharing a message with you this week, and I've been wrestling with what words might be helpful for you uh, or maybe even for me in these times. Some of you this week are starting remote learning with school. You're wrestling with new technologies, some that are working well, some that aren't. Uh, some of you are trying to figure out how you can make sure their kids get their work done while you also get your own work done for your job. Some of you have gone to college only to see outbreaks sweeping across campuses and starting to force people back home. Some of you are struggling with changes to your professional life, or some of you are struggling with being separated from social groups that are, imp that are important to you or not being able to go to church for a worship service or a small group or a Wednesday meal. And I read an article today about the toll that this is taking on pastors who feel so much pressure to help guide their churches through uncharted waters. They're shouldering the needs of hundreds, maybe even thousands of people, all of who have a variety of opinions about what those churches should be doing. You know, there's this urge we have when we talk about our faith to acknowledge just the positive, the good, the happy, right? To skim over those struggles so that we can point to something that feels good. And it's this urge that causes people to say things like, well, he's in a better place when someone has lost a loved one or to look at a bad situation and say, well, God is going to accomplish something good through this. And I wonder, I've been thinking, I wonder if we are stuck feeling sometimes like our questions, our doubts, our struggles just aren't allowed. That to be a person of faith is to dwell on messages of hope, on silver linings only. Now, don't get me wrong here. Hope is a fundamental part of the Christian faith. This triumph of life over death, of light over darkness, that is our story. And yet, just because light exists doesn't mean that we ignore the darkness, right? Just because we believe in the resurrection doesn't mean that we don't have fear about the fragility of life. That we don't grieve when we lose someone we love. We find strength in God, but that doesn't mean that we don't have bouts of difficulty or despair. We have faith, but that doesn't preclude our questions, right? Life is this beautiful thing, and yet it is also this angsty thing, right? To be on this journey is to wrestle with uncertainty. It's a, to occasionally feel overwhelmed, to struggle with how that tension between uh, how things are and how you wish they were, right? And it is important, I think, to name those feelings, maybe even to embrace those feelings because those are feelings that are, are, are a part of our human experience. You know, we actually see this in scripture, particularly in what we refer to as wisdom literature, books like Ecclesiastes or Job, or Proverbs. Job actually is one of the heaviest books in the Bible, not like physical weight, but spiritual weight, psychological weight. There's a lot going on in Job, but one of the key messages that I get is that it's okay to ask why. Why pain? Why suffering? Where is God in the midst of that? And the reality is there's not always an easy answer, right? I mean, life is often amazing, and then life is sometimes just really hard. And God is present in both. Now, I've probably said before that my favorite book in Scripture is Ecclesiastes. It is basically this written account of the search for the good life, a life of meaning, a life of fulfillment. It is a book that reminds us of the paradoxes of our lives, the good and the bad, the pleasures and the pains, that it's all a part of our experience. And so what does that mean for us as people of faith? What do we do with the seasons of life that aren't so easy? Barbara Brown Taylor in one of her books talks about our spiritual journey like a map, right? You have the center of your map, which is the area that's most familiar to you. It's like your seat in your pew, your Sunday school class or small group, the sound of the choir or the strumming of a guitar. It's a sermon that reminds you of something that you already knew, but helps you to connect it a little bit more with your life. It's hearing a familiar Bible passage. It's it's a known place for us, a comfortable place. And yet that's not the whole map, right? If you venture beyond the center towards the edges, things get a little less familiar, a little less predictable. You're pushed beyond your comfort zone. And some of us love that. We love experiencing something new. We love being challenged. And then some of us really struggle when we're not 
at the center of the map, when we're not at that place that is familiar to us. Friends, right now we are on areas of the map that many of us have never seen before. The world feels like it is upside down. And even what it means to be church is being reshaped. And yet, as Barbara Brown Taylor writes, those untamed places, those places that are just rough sketches on that map that are not fully defined, those are important places for us. Those are places of transformation. We're very comfortable in the center of the map. And many of us don't like to journey too far from that familiar place, but when you read scripture, you find that people spend a lot of time in the wilderness, at the edges of the map, maybe even off the map. And I think that is a reminder to us that when we become too comfortable at the center, we end up missing something. You know, it's interesting, many of the true spiritual giants, if you read their stories, they are as familiar with darkness as they are with light because the darkness has much to teach us at times. And so as we find ourselves on the edges of the map, may we not be so anxious to return to the comfort of the center. Instead, may we begin to embrace unfamiliar territory, to be open to the lessons it may have for us. Lessons about ourselves, lessons about God, and about this journey that we are on together. I hope you have a great week.